sequences. And so uh, he's doing it, this at the tail end of his whole calculation. So this is all being done on that fast on-chip memory. And uh, in fact, it's better to do it this way where you're, you're having the number of active warps because that means that uh, you're making that uh, instruction, that execution unit basically focusing its, its efforts on fewer and fewer and fewer warps, which means it's running more and more efficiently as it gets closer to the final stage there. And so I would, I would say for this thing where you're doing the, the reduction out of data that's in shared memory, this is definitely the way to do it. If you were doing a reduction over global memory, like a scan or something like that, a really huge array with millions of elements, yeah, in that case, then you would probably do it as its own kernel. And you might do it, it might even take multiple kernel launches <coughs> because you, you can't have thread blocks communicate with each other. Uh, and unless you use things like atomic memory operations, you know, you may be limited. Like if you're summing integers, you can use atomic add for things like that. If you're summing floating point numbers, you can't. And so, uh, well, I guess uh, maybe Fermi has atomic uh, operations on floats, I forget. But the older hardware did not. And so and that would be a case where you have to do it in multiple kernel launches. And then and if you're going to have to do that, they might as well be the perfect thread block dimensions and so on. Okay. But he's, he's got the easy case. He's doing it all out of shared memory. Right. Yeah. So, so this is just over the entire thread block itself. So. But that pattern definitely comes up in a lot of uh, kernels I've, I've developed over the last couple of years. You end up doing reductions like this for any accumulated quantity for within at least within one thread block. But it's relatively quick for the CPU to go ahead and clean this up by you know adding just a single result for each thread block, sending those together. So. Okay, so now I'll talk to you about the long-range electrostatics, and um, you'll have to be briefer on this one. Yeah, I guess I will be. Um, <laughs> so, um, we've been uh, developing this multi-level summation method um, that has a number of advantages over, over the methods that are more commonly used. Um, basically, the algorithm has linear time complexity, and it allows non-periodic or periodic boundaries. Um, it produces continuous forces for dynamics, which is an advantage of a fast multiple method. And it avoids the 3D FFTs for better parallel scaling, uh, which is an advantage of a PMB. Um, it permits polynomial splitting, so you don't have to use it, these Earth C functions uh, for the short range part. Um, the spatial separation that it does uh, allows good use of multiple time stepping techniques. And uh, it can also be uh, extended to, uh, you know, as, as a method for other types of pairwise interactions. It's not just limited to uh, electrostatic interactions. And uh, so this is showing the main idea is behind a multi-level summation method, where we take the 1 over R potential and we split it into a short range part, and then a part that's more slowly varying up to a longer cutoff distance. Say our initial cutoff distance is A, so the next cutoff distance is 2A. And then a, an even more slowly varying part that's, that's smoothly, smoothly uh, truncated uh, beyond a cutoff distance of 4A, and uh, so on, where we're, we're doubling the uh, cutoff distance at each level. And uh, we're going to approximate these slowly varying parts on, uh, on, on these lattices. Uh, these, these grids will have spacing H, and then 2H, and 4H, and so on, where the, the uh, grid spacing doubles with the, um, with the range of, of the cutoff distance. So this depicts the um, computational steps that are done in multi-level summation. 
overall the force is uh, expressed as an exact short range part and uh, an interpolated long range part. And so schematically here we're taking positions and charges and we've got a short range cutoff part that, that uh, makes contributions to the forces. And um, then we have um, basically a, a hierarchy of grids here, where we have an, an H grid here at this first level, and a 2H grid, and a 4H grid. And uh, so the interpolation step spreads charges to the first grid level, and then further restrictions will spread uh, charges to uh, the 2H and 4H, and however long, however high this, this uh, needs to extend to encompass the entire system. Um, at each uh, grid level here, you are doing a short range calculation uh, that um, involves grid-grid uh, grid interactions. So although it's an analogous to the short range cutoff interactions between atoms, uh, we can take advantage of the regularity of, of having things in the lattice. Uh, so, well, it's effectively convolution, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's how this is calculated. It's calculated as a 3D convolution. And um, so then once we, um, these, these grid grid interactions result in um, potentials at our lattice points, and then uh, the prolongation is uh, an interpolation from a uh, coarser grid uh, to add those potentials into the uh, next level grid and so on until finally we are interpolating the final result and adding those into the forces uh, for the atoms. And so that, that becomes the, the uh, long range uh, contribution to those forces. Uh, so here I'm showing you results on multi-level summation on the GPU, but this is for the electrostatic potential maps calculation. Um, and so, uh, although this this is you know probably of interest for that calculation, um, I just wanted to show the result that you know that this uh, long-range part that's the, the lattice cutoff calculation part, those grid-grid interactions, um, we're able to get uh, speed-ups of up to um, uh, 36. And, um, and, and so I, I wanted to show some, some results before I move on. Uh, now we're taking that part and, and now we're uh, applying that to uh, you know, the uh, multi-level summation force calculation. Uh, so let me talk about uh, how these grid interactions are calculated. Um, basically here the, the grid interactions are uh, summing the, um, uh, the, the contribution from the charges and so it's, it's summing a potential here that's, that's these results of the charges that are within a cutoff radius. And um, so since we have a uniform spacing, we can uh, pre-compute uh, this as a stencil of weights that gets applied. And so what we really end up effectively calculating is uh, a 3D convolution of this uh, uh, stencil of weights. Uh, the stencil size can be rather big, um, uh, as big as like this uh, 23 cubed. Um, but still, it can be arranged in a way that um, the, all of the data is, is uh, nice and, and local and it, it ends up being uh, uh, a very fast uh, calculation to, to map onto the GPU. So the way we put this on the GPU is that we uh, uh, store the weights in constant memory where we had each uh, direction up to the next multiple of four. And the thread block is uh, assigned to calculate a four by four by four region of potentials. And these are going to be stored contiguously so that we can go ahead and get our 
uh, global reads and writes. And so it, instead of storing the lattice in the traditional, you know, all the x's and then, you know, increment and y and then each plane increment and z, we've uh, uh, stored these in much tighter blocks where everything's blocked into little 4x4x4 four by four by four regions. And those are stored contiguously in, in memory. And then each of those blocks are uh, indexed in the more traditional um, uh, lattice indexing approach. And um, this is worth mentioning because this lattice cutoff calculation or, or convolutions and things like them, this is one of those cases where the, the number of floating point operations that are being done with each of those reference data points is very small. So it is extremely important that it gets the memory access pattern exactly right. And, and so organizing those things in memory just the right way enables him to get peak uh, global memory bandwidth. And that's perhaps more important than anything he does in, in the interior of that kernel that does all the math. The math is practically uh, inconsequential as far as the speed goes. It's everything about what he's doing here is how he organizes memory. So that's the most important uh, thing to observe there. Yeah. Um, OK, I think I skipped over a, a crucial idea on the previous slide. Oh, yes. And that's our that we've got a different set of weights at each level of this grid for these grid-grid interactions. But the weights are identical up to just a single scaling factor due to the fact that, you know, you've got the uh, grid spacing doubling and the cutoff distance doubling. Um, and so I'm, I also want to say, just going back a couple of slides here, that the amount of work here is dropping off by a factor of eight at each level. And so it would not be uh, a real good use of the GPU to go ahead and um, calculate each of these with a separate uh, kernel because we very quickly run out of useful work to, to uh, apply our GPU to. Um, but since we can go ahead and use this fact that you know we can keep a single copy of the weights and just scale them depending on which level we happen to be operating on, we can go ahead and uh, map all of the levels into a single GPU call. And so, so that's another thing that we're doing here um, that I was about to gloss over, so I'm glad I did. Um, so we, in order to decode this information, we store uh, a very small map of the level array offsets in the constant memory as well. That each thread and thread block on startup goes ahead and just figures out where it is with respect to this map. And so that way it gives it, it, it the proper offset into global memory. And it also gives it the proper uh, scaling factor to use for the weights. So then the kernel has the thread block loop over the surrounding regions of the charge. And, uh, and so this is similar to what we just saw in the um, short-range kernel, where basically we have a uh, particular uh, region that we're calculating uh, potentials for. And then the surrounding region of, of uh, uh, charges, we go ahead and we read these pieces into shared memory. And uh, like I said, all the grid levels are calculated concurrently. And then each, each set of weights is scaled by that level factor. So the other issue is uh, how we use constant memory. And constant memory is best used if all the threads in the thread block uh, read and use the same element uh, all at once. And um, so in order to use constant memory in this way, 